Hey everyone, uh, today's video is going to be on the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero BTF. Uh, this board is not available yet, but should be fairly soon. All right, uh, this board was sent to me by ASUS North America, uh, just a small disclaimer there. Um, but with that said, let's just take a quick look at it. I uh, just want to say that this is not a final retail unit, so the packaging may not be as consistent with something you may receive. Okay, so just uh, keep in mind. So inside, we're going to have the, you know, Rog layout that we've come to expect with all the motherboards at this point. Um, but let's just get the board out. We'll take a look at the accessories real quick, and then we'll move on. All right, so in the box, you're going to get the ROG membership card, your sticker book, and your quick start guide. And I think, yep, uh, it's actually, you know, I just saw Omni in here, which is, I think, new. This quick start guy might be. Oh, this is new, I think. This guy here. But anyway, um, that's what you get in the box. Aside from that, you're going to get some other accessories that are going to be fairly familiar to everyone at this point. Uh, if you watch my videos, I go through these a lot. So, <laughs> with that said, Wi Fi antenna, Q slide for M2. There's going to be a couple of these. You're also going to get uh, another clip for the M2. You get four SATA cables. All right, two of them 90 degree. And you're going to get an uh, RGB extension. You're also going to get these little rubber pads. And what these little rubber pads are is to put on the back of your MVME M2 so that uh, in case, you know, to give it proper support when you put the cooling cover over it. If you have a dual-sided M2, you do not use these. All right, so you're going to get a couple of those. Another Q-slide, so there's two of them. Another the rubber, rubber little gaps. And... Uh, the front panel connector. Uh, most cases at this point should have this um, pre-done, but I understand that for some folks, um, well, for some folks, they don't like it because the case then doesn't match the motherboard. Uh, but generally speaking, with the Seuss motherboard, you don't have that issue. Uh, and then you get another M2 uh, screw there, and another one of those pads, and another Q slide. So you get a lot of that. And then you get a USB drive with the drivers on it. And this obviously helps you if you, you know, don't have internet access and it's the only computer you have. Uh, sometimes Windows 11 does not have the built-in drivers. Or, you know, with that said, uh, you should always download the latest drivers from the website. Now, let's just take a look at the board. So I'm going to pull this out real quick. We'll put the box aside. Right. So with that said, let's take a good look at the board itself. Uh, you'll see right away some of this is going to be fairly similar in design to the regular Hero, which I have on the side here, which we'll go into in a moment. Uh, but quickly, just remember, to, this is actually upside down on mine. But <laughs> like I said, this is not a retail sample, so don't expect everything to be the same in terms of packaging. Okay, so looking at the board, this should look very familiar uh, to the regular Hero. Uh, but of course, we have more armor. Now, having the more armor on the motherboard is very in line with all the BTF boards, right? Whether it be the Z890 Hero, uh, the Tough Line, this, yeah, the Tough Line at this point only. So with those that... You know, they're all going to have the more armor here because if you don't put the armor here, you're going to see a bunch of uh, solder solder endpoints, and that doesn't look very pretty, right? Now, there has been some changes. So if I were to come here and I were to bring the hero into the photo mix here, you can actually see the reflection of my camera. But yes, so if I bring the regular hero into position here, you will notice that we no longer have the X8 at the bottom. Now, that may not matter to some folks. That may matter to some. Uh, for me, I actually prefer this X4 layout. I'm going to tell you guys why in a second here. So if I were to remove heat sinks here, you'll see that we retain the M2 that's directly going to the CPU underneath the CPU. So this would be the first uh, slot for your NVMe. This is a Gen 5 slot. And if I were to remove the cover, you'll notice that on the Hero BTF, it's a one, it's a one maneuver, right? Uh, the some of the you see, before I get into here, you'll see here that we have these kind of black. You know what? Let me get this into the light. Sorry, guys. So we have some of this black, uh, these black raised areas. Now, those little pads I was showing you earlier socket into this. Into this. So if you have a single sided NVMe, like for example, uh, not this one, but this is a double sided, right? But if you have a single sided, then you would put a pad in here, and then you would put the NVMe over it. This way you get the correct pressure for the cooler contact. Uh, speaking of which, there's a reason they move to this and they don't use the screws anymore. This kind of happened starting with the later boards released around, I think, spring of this year. 
simply because prior to that, they had not kind of sorted out the mounting pressure and they needed to use screws. So now that they've got the pressure worked out so it's even all the way across, they no longer have to use screws. So with that said, let's remove this and I'll show you guys the difference in the layouts. Let's take a look at the NVMe layout. On the new BTF, you will have uh, the X4 here inside the X8, and that changes things a little bit. But overall, the NVMe support doesn't really change much. So you have the same number of slots, right? So you have one, two, three, four here. You have one, two, three, four here. Now, two of these, uh, the two with the stickers on here, uh, these are shared along with the top lane on both boards, okay? So for example, if I were to populate NVMe here, then this one would turn into an X8, all right? And this would be an X4, and this would also be an X4. So if you're gonna populate one of these slots, you might as well populate both, right? Because you're already making the adjustment here. So in that regard, uh, they're, all, they're all gonna be Gen 5, obviously, for these. And if we're coming over here, you'll notice that the same thing applies here, all right? These two slots share the lane distribution with the top slot. So if you were to populate one of these, you would cut this to X8. Same goes for the X8 over here. If you were to populate this X8, you would cut this to X8. Now, obviously, you can't have all of these at the same time, right? So you couldn't have, for example, two MVMEs here and another GPU here and another GPU. That wouldn't work. You had to make that kind of choice, right? So you could populate, for example, an X4 card here, an X4 here, and an X4 here, okay? So uh, moving on to the MVMEs that go to the chipset themselves, that's these two slots, right? Same goes for here. These two slots go to the chipset. And instead of the slim SAS, which we have on this side, this X4 slim SAS. So now what we have is just the X4 that goes to the chipset. So you may prefer one layout over the other. It really comes down to you. But for me, the way I see it is if you're, let's say, you know, average Joe, and at most you have a sound card or you have, a, you do streaming, you have a capture card. This is probably ideal because, you know, you can just populate the slot and not have to worry about cutting into your primary or anything like that. So if you were to populate a sound card here, you would cut, you know, or a capture card, you would cut the top slot to X, X8. While that, like I said, doesn't really matter for fifth gen GPUs currently, but if you, unless you swap platforms on a routine basis, uh, you never know, next generation, that might make a difference, right? So that PCIe scaling may not be the same for next generation. So for, as a long-term buyer, uh, this would probably be what I would pick, right? If you weren't going to change all that often. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the rest of the board itself. Uh, obviously, on here, we have all the connectors on the back. On here, we have all the connectors on the front. So let's just start with the top here. You'll notice that there is one fan slot, uh, one fan uh, not slot, <laughs> but one fan plug in the top here. This is going to be your CPU, right? It makes sense because for most folks, they have an AIO in the front and the AIO, you know, the fan, it's easier to hit it in the front than in the back. All right, but you don't lose actually any uh, headers, for example. So if I flip it on the back, I have the other three to match the four I have over here. Now you also notice, obviously my EPS are gonna be on the back, my 24 pin is gonna be on the back. And as we go down here, you kind of see it mirrors layered on the original Hero. All right, we have the USB-C, we have the USB-3. We do not have this PCIe um, eight pin connection here for, uh, fast charging i think it's a, it's a 30 watt i don't remember off the top of my head uh but this allows for faster charging through the USB C. okay uh we don't have that here instead we have this which is the 16 pin to feed the gpu now um for those of you that are aware of btf boards uh this is where the gpu will get its power from if you have a gpu uh, gpu that is btf compatible uh, if, whether it be 2.5 BTF, the original series. Uh, I recently did a video on the white BTF 5070 Ti and I kind of covered this whole entire thing. So uh, with that said, we have the 16 pin and then we have the two SATAs and then we have another USB 3. So we kind of have matching with the original hero, right? We have everything the original hero had. We also have the two additional SATA down here to just match the four that we had over here, all right? So we're not losing any of that. Right, in terms of the other connectors, they're all going to be the same two USB 2s. Right, you still have your temp sensor, your fan headers down here. We have one, my one of them is busted from CES. But yeah, so we have two down here and two down here. So everything is going to be the same aside from this A pin for the, for the fast charge. Okay, so outside of really just the, you know, layout for this X4 here and the lane layout here, uh, there's not much significant 
functional I.O. differences, right? So if we, even if we come to the back, you'll notice that they're kind of identical, right? We have the same layout here with the HDMI, uh, 40 gigabit USB, 10 gigabit, another 40 gigabit uh, that can also do display, uh, and then uh, three 10 gigabit, another 10 gigabit USB, and BIOS flashback port, but you can see that it's identical, right? Same LAN ports. So nothing really changes in terms of all that. The only diff primary difference is obviously is gonna be it's BTF support, a BTF board. Visually speaking, it's gonna be a little bit different and the X8 down here. So that's really just what it comes down to. Obviously, uh, if you have a 5090 BTF or you have a 4090 BTF Strix or you're planning to get the 5090 BTF, or if you're planning to get the Matrix, you should get this, right? Uh, the Matrix, I can tell you, uh, I'm not sure the exact release date, but I can tell you it is very limited in the United States. I know the exact number that the US is getting. I don't know if I can share it or not, uh, but it's gonna be very, very limited. And when you look at the 800 watts that the Matrix can pull, uh, while not specified, I'm pretty sure it's doing it partially through this, connector here and partially through the PCIe, uh, the regular X16, right? Because it needs to pull from two separate locations to get that 800 watts on the bus. I think that's how they're doing it. I'm not sure, but that's how they speculated they were going to do that during a Computex presentation. All right. So with that said, uh, that pretty much wraps up the quick look at this board. I will be doing a build with this uh, BTF board. I'm just waiting for another BTF case to come out. Uh, well, on its way uh so that way i can kind of show you guys in a case not just the board on on a table um but with that said uh thanks for watching stay safe and take care